Hey guys, this is Barrett Sultano. I am bringing you with our model Nicole, the chignon break, bouquet breakdown is what we're gonna call it today. We're gonna use some techniques of the traditional chignon of a lot of folding, a little bit of twisting, and we're gonna go through that as we do the entire up style right now. So you can see right now, I'm just taking a one and a half inch curling iron, and we're going through the front part of Nicole's hair. And I like to start in the front when I'm doing a set, especially on someone who has a little bit of a thinner, straighter formation for their hair. Just because you let that set, you let the curl sit in there a little bit longer to let the curl formation happen. And as we go through, you're gonna see that I'm using two different irons. I'm using a one and a half and a one inch curling iron. I like to do two different kinds of curling irons with a straighter formation of hair only because it gives a little bit more texture. One curls a little bit wavier, one curls a little bit more curled. But as I said, we're letting the, these curls right now sit and cool down. So that when we go to do the up style, those, those, are, the, those are the first ones that we take down, but they've also had the longest to set in the curl. Same thing, horizontal sectionings. I like to take a one to one and a half inch sectioning you don't want to go too big with your sections. You want to make sure that you're actually getting the curl complete around that iron. And if not the entire section, if you have those little baby fine hairs in the front, go through and just put a little bend in them because you are want to get want to gonna get those up in the style as you go through. And you can also see that when I'm going through and clipping them, I really like to stay pretty uniform and pretty organized as I'm going up. That's why I'm doing the horizontal sectioning, going with the round of her head. But I'm always using the pin curl clip and putting them on the right-handed side. I am right-handed. So if you're left-handed, you can really put them on either side. I would just recommend always keeping them on the same side because then when you go to take them out of the set, when you go to do the style itself, it doesn't disturb the curl too much. It doesn't rip apart the curl as you're taking it down. And also, while you're doing a set, this is something I probably wouldn't do maybe on every client that comes into the salon looking for a formal style, prom style, bridal style. When I do do brides, I always like to do a set on them because they are, you know, it's one of the most important days of their lives, as they all like to say. They really want to make sure that all those pictures, every, all the pictures that they get from their photographers, from their friends, that the style looks the same all day long. So if someone were coming in just for a night out on the town, you wouldn't necessarily have to do a complete set on them if their hair holds a curl pretty well. Like I said before, if they don't hold a curl, I would go through and do maybe a quicker set, or at least to add a little bit of bend into their hair and let the curl cool off. Now the back sectionings, we're gonna go from the nape all the way up to the crown, horizontal sectionings, changing every other row with the one inch to the one and a half inch. As we get to the top, I really like to split that. I like to use the bigger curling iron as we get to the top sections, because that's more than likely where you're gonna add a little bit more volume if you are gonna add the volume to the up style. and then setting those up, letting them curl down, cool down, excuse me. And as we take the set down, I always like to start with the first curl that I pinned up on the sides. Sometimes you can, you can leave the sides up if they do want some pieces down maybe in the front, their fringe area is a little too short. You can leave those pieces up as you're doing the back of the up style. I always like to start at the back of the up style really get a formation of where we're going with that style to see if they like it, where they want the front to live after that. Complete back is done is a little bit easier, I find, because you already have the style behind it. So right now we're just gonna do the base and you can see that I just twisted it around my hand and we're gonna let it fold into the rest of the hair because this is the base. We're probably gonna use a few more bobby pins than I would on every other piece. I like to make sure that the bobby pins are crisscrossed into an X because that really helps them lock in and make sure that it's nice and secure because you are going to be pinning the rest of the hair onto this base right now. The chopstick's really one of the things that 
I use a lot when it comes in upside and you're gonna see me using it to fold the hair into other pieces of the hair. You're gonna see me using it to section the hair away. And you're also gonna see me using it just to fold in the, the edges of the hair as well. One reason why I really chose to call this a chignon bouquet breakdown, um, a chignon traditionally is a lot of folding, making sure the hair is layered on top of each other. So this is more of a untraditional style of chignon. There's a ton of different ways that you can do a very traditional chignon. This is just taking the technique from the tradition and kind of updating it a little bit, using a little bit more folding, a little bit more sectioning in it. Taking something really classic and putting your own twist on it is a great way to come up with a new formal style for someone who comes in saying, you know what, I think I just want a chignon, I think I want a French twist, something like that. Take that, those techniques. Just like if you're watching this video, you're gonna take the techniques. You don't necessarily have to take the entire style. Just take the techniques that I'm showing you with the twisting, with the folding, and you know, the way that I'm spraying, the way that I'm using my combs, that my hands. You don't have to take everything from this. Take one technique and use it in your styling and it can completely change the way that maybe you would go about something. It can give it a, a new spin on it, which is what we're doing with the chignon, just taking the technique of the folding and putting a new spin on it. And you're gonna see that I use a lot of bobby pins, but I don't ever open them with my mouth. That is a huge no-no in my book. I feel that if a client sees you open a bobby pin with your teeth or your mouth, then they're gonna wonder, okay, now she's gonna go put that in my hair. So I would say just using, you don't have to open the bobby pin completely, but if you just pinch it open with your fingertips and then slide it up and then back down, you're gonna see, you've seen me do that quite a bit with each section, go up and down with the bobby pin or even the hairpin, it really slides in nicely and hides the bobby pin because you never really want to see those bobby pin ends sticking out in a formal style. And you always want to make sure that you're using the same colored bobby pins as your client's hair. If you have a blonde client, make sure you're not using the black bobby pins. There we go with the sliding up, sliding back down. Kind of tweaking those little tails right there. Using a lighter spray as we're going through. You don't want to use a really firm spray as you're putting the style together, as you're folding the hair in together, only because then if you need to move a piece of hair, it's gonna be a little bit harder to move. I wouldn't use the firmer spray until the very ends of it. So I'm mean, just using a light working spray, but always spraying in the direction that the hair is living, that the cuticle is growing into. Because if you spray opposite of the cuticle, then you're gonna fray out those ends a little bit more and nobody wants to have a little bit of frizz when it comes to a formal style especially a bride, prom, anybody. So always spraying in the direction that that hair is living. A really important question to always ask your client too, it may seem really simple and that you wouldn't think would bother a lot of people is, do you want your ears covered? Do you want the tops of it, the hair laying on it? Do you want it behind it? I've, uh, I've found through the years that a lot of people say, Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't actually think I want my ears showing. I think I want the hair to live a little bit over it. So that's one thing as you're getting to the front sections of this style that you want to make sure that you ask somebody. Do you want it on there or do you not? And it could be just a simple yes or no. It, couldn't, it maybe doesn't bother them at all, but it's something that maybe they didn't even think about. And you want to make sure that they're really happy with the entire style and especially the front of it because that's what they're seeing. That's where you can tweak it a little bit. If you see that they're getting a little uncomfortable, you can kind of tell their body language and seeing, oh, is she smiling, is she not? See where that, see uh, how that client wants to wear the front of their hair. And again, with just folding that hair over, you're gonna see it, that section has a nice little sleekness to it instead of the twists and the folds into it. I really like to make sure that it's nice and cohesive. The front of this style is gonna be a little bit more sleek, a little bit more subdued. So I wanna make sure that 
the back of the hair ties into the front of the hair. And you can make a cohesive style even though it's a little bit more to one side, you can still make sure that it's even. You can make sure that the volume's even all the way around, that you have the sleekness on one side that you have on the other side, as well as in the back. Going through, taking our last section on the side, and this is her heavy side, so this is where the fringe is gonna live. Again, spraying backwards. Doing a little fold right there, a little twist, but always stepping in front. Use your mirror as a stylist. Step in front of that client to see if that piece of hair is gonna look right from the front. It may look right from the back and where you're placing it, but sometimes if you step in front of them, it has a whole different look. There we go, just opening that bobby pin with the tips of my finger. Folding the hair around each other, stepping in front, seeing where I want those ends to live. Again, just making sure that you're spraying in the direction that that hair is going, using the tail comb to get those little fine hairs above the ear. Especially on this heavy side, you wanna get the lower section above the ear if you're gonna let the rest of it live on top of the ear. And you can see I kinda of changed my body position as well. I went in and moved more to the front of her hair as I'm doing the heavy section. So I can see where those hairs are gonna live and where I'm gonna fold them into the base of the style. I think using hairpins is really important when it comes to upstyling, especially when you're doing at the front of the hair or doing at the tops of it, because that's those are the parts that the client's gonna see. They're not gonna see the base underneath everything, because we folded everything and layered everything on top of each other. So you really wanna make sure that those pieces are nice and slick, but using the hairpin to put it in place and then see if you like where it is, stepping in front of it, as you've seen me do it quite a few times during the video. And then going back in and putting a bobby pin in it or maybe putting another hairpin in there. We're getting to the fringe section of her hair. Again, spraying in that direction. You're gonna see that a lot in this section. Lightly combing this hair. You don't wanna disturb the curl too much because then you're gonna brush the curl that you put in and worked so hard with the set. You're gonna brush it completely out if we go a little harsh with the brushing. Again, just folding that hair nicely into it. That's why I'm kind of using this as a chignon bouquet breakdown. Like I said, we called it before. As I'm folding the hair into the style, you can kind of see it almost looks like little rosebuds. That's why we kind of use the bouquet word for it. And the folding section for the chignon. And if you have any little hairs out of place, you can take a step back at it and then see that it might need a, a bobby pin or a hair pin if it's a larger piece. Using the bobby pin for the larger pieces and the hairpins for those little fine pieces that you can just slide right into the rest of it. Fringe is really important just to use the tail comb or the end of my brush just to place that in there nice and sleek. And there you have a nice formal style for our model Nicole, the Chignon Bouquet Breakdown. Hey guys, this is Matt from Gratitude, and what I'm going to do is show you a quick little tip on how to color men's hair on our lovely guest, lovely, you like that? <laughs> uh, on our guest Dave, we're going to use um, a quick little flash finish color, so this is a demi-permanent men's color. What I want to do is just start right on the edges of his hair, 
and work this in. I'm gonna start right at the temple area. Paint that through. Guys like things to be done quickly, efficient. You know, he's trying to get in and out of the salon, so I wanna go through, work this color right around the edges. This should be the deepest point of men's hair color, and then it should get a little bit lighter towards the top. So work our way through, getting the temples done. And then what we're gonna do is take our blow dryer. I wanna blow dry the top. I wanna to get a little bit of height in it. Use the heat from the blow dryer to just elevate the hair slightly. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of 10 volume lightener and just paint that through the tips of his hair. We don't have to get too crazy. This isn't too exact, very organic feel. Paint it in. This is much better than using a foil cap. No guy wants to see that on his head. And I'm not gonna comb that. I, I just wanna leave it nice, organic. Leave these pieces in there. Let the sides process. Now I'll take a little bit more of the flash finish, work it through the sides. We can leave some of his natural. We don't have to cover everything. Work the rest of the color through. We're gonna let that sit for 10 minutes and then Dave will be ready and I'll have a brand new looking hair color, much younger, much more fun uh, look to it. Thanks. Hey guys, this is Gratitude Education here with a little bit of a business tip for you. As a salon owner, my goal is to make sure that every stylist that works for me is talking about things that are gonna inspire your guests to come back quick. Um, we're gonna talk about a little thing called frequency of visit. Frequency of visit is something you can find probably on your computer software. My favorite computer software is Millennium Harm Software. Um, basically, what we're gonna do with that is look at the number of how many visits per year your guest is coming in. The industry average is four times per year. So what can that do for you as a stylist or salon owner, raising that number? If you look at, um, the first thing is your average client. So if the average client returns every 12 weeks, so that would be four times a year, um, that's a $50 guest, let's say $50 average ticket, four times a year is $200. So very simple math. If we just take that same guest, we get them to come back every four to five weeks, so that's our goal, four to five weeks, and we look at the single color, same $50 client, so we haven't upgraded them to anything. Um, they now come in 12 times a year, they're now a $600 client. So you're taking and tripling your guests right there. Um, that's the power of the frequency of visit. Then we look at how do we get them to make sure that they're coming back soon. We need things that are gonna help pre-book the guests. So at Gratitude, what we do is we have a loyalty card. The loyalty card is something that we take, uh, we give our guests a card before they leave, we write a date on it, and as long as they come back by that date, they get 10% off. So we can pick a date in the future. So let's say they get a haircut, we get them to come back within four to five weeks to get that haircut again. If they use the card, they get 10% off. So little things like that, you can twist around, make them your own, and get your guests to come back in quicker. Now, average ticket. Average ticket is very simple to figure out. You basically take your total services for the day and you divide them by the number of guests. So let's say we have that $50 client that we were just talking about. She's coming in now 12 visits a year, so she's a $600 client. Um, the biggest thing that we can do is to really be a successful stylist is to make sure that you upgrade um, that guest. So let's say it's a treatment in your shampoo bowl or some kind of upgrade to color or just anything you can think of, little tiny upgrades that are gonna benefit your guests. Cause that's really the goal is making their hair better and making them, uh, developing a relationship with that guest so that they come back quicker. The simple upgrade, now we have a guest, single color. Their average ticket is now $85, 12 visits a year. Now they're a $1,020 guest. So you went from a $600 guest to now a $1,020. And that's just one guest in the salon. So think about if you take your whole book and you do these little tiny upgrades, the things that you never want to do as a stylist because you're so busy, and you actually make the upgrades one guest at a time, you're going to see a big difference in your paycheck. So let's break down what we've gone over so far. The industry average single color is $50. If they're only coming in four times a year for that, 
um, and you have 250 guests, you're bringing in $50,000 a year. That's what you're bringing into the salon. That's not what you're making. So if you want to do what successful stylists are doing, you look at your single color, you get a haircut in there, you upgrade them to a simple wash house upgrade. Now your average ticket is $110, great average ticket. 250 guests, you get them to come in 12 times a year. Now you're bringing in $330,000. That's the stylist that I would want to be. And what I do with my staff is to inspire them to watch these numbers on a daily basis. So we look at the frequency of visit, we look at the rebooking, we look at how many services they're doing per guest, and we look at the average ticket. So the cool thing that we're doing at Gratitude Salon and Education is we do a weekly contest. The weekly contest is simple. It's good for everyone at every level so that they can all compete friendly competition together. So we look at their service per guest number, their take home per guest number, and their rebooking percentage. The best part about this is whether you're a stylist that's been doing hair for one year or 20 years, you can compete against each other in a, in a great way. So let's say it's a per guest contest. So it's not this stylist brings in $2,000 more a week than this stylist. It's how many services are you doing per guest? How much take home are you selling per guest or retail? And how well are you rebooking your guests? Those are the numbers that are gonna show you the future. So what I wanna do is not just tell you from my mouth, I want you to hear it from the team that I work with on a daily basis. So we're gonna let them kind of share their stories and success that they've had with this. I have really benefited from tracking these numbers because Retail was always something that I was just naturally good at. It was something that made me a whole bunch more money, but it wasn't until I had these other numbers brought to my attention that I really started to grow and I really started to watch you know, my paychecks get bigger. And I think one of the biggest ones for me was the rebooking because it made sure that I not only was making money that day, but I was helping to build insurance that I was gonna get a paycheck four weeks from now which I love because now I don't have to worry quite so much and it's just gotten better. And I know that my future is just gonna get better because I'm helping to build it today. I always like to make sure that my take home numbers are nice and high because when my take home numbers are high, that means that my guests have plenty of product at home to make sure that their hair is looking good. So they're walking a walking billboard for me. It's also going to allow them to remember me every single time that they use that product. So it's almost as if they're getting a flash of my business card every time they style their hair. What I love about tracking our service per guest number is it allows us to refocus on the guest in our chair and being able to share with them every experience that our salon has to offer. Being able to upgrade them to a conditioning treatment when their hair is feeling dry really adds loyalty to your client they want to see. So for me personally as a stylist, the numbers really help me because I can look at them daily, I can look at them monthly, I can look at them weekly to set my goals as a stylist for that next quarter so that I can reach the levels that I want to be at. So there you have it, hearing it from the best team I have ever worked with. The Gratitude Education team, they're working every day to become more and more successful. That's why we're here to share with you guys some of our ideas, tricks, and you know, one of the, my favorite sayings is make your own luck. And it comes from a guy, skateboarder, Rob Deerdick. The thing I like about that is that's really what this industry is all about, is creating your luck. Don't wait for it to come to you. Um, good luck. Hope these ideas help you out. And please follow us on Gratitude Education. Follow us on Facebook, Gratitude Salon Education, and we will hopefully meet again soon, come up with more business ideas together and uh, enjoy these tips. Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from Gratitude Education and freesaloneducation.com. I'm very excited to bring to you guys another free education video. And we couldn't do it without the people that support us. We now have Freestyle Systems on board with us and we're really excited. This is a product that's great for your salon. It's gonna bring maximum profitability so that, I mean, just look at how cool they look in your salon. Think about a guest walking in, what they're gonna see first 
cool things like this. Also, the other great thing about freestyle systems is it's great for the environment. Because when you pull the blow dryer down, it turns on. When you put it back up, it turns off. You're not running it all day long. You can take breaks in between as you're working with the stylist. And that's also gonna help you move quicker and make more money in the salon. So please support the people that help support us and give you guys free education. Enjoy this video. Here's Barrett Silitano with a great style. Hey guys, this is Barrett Silitano. Right now we're just gonna start out power drying our model Brooke. You can see that I'm using three style systems. The great thing that I really love about this is, is it's such a lightweight product for the low drying and it really helps because the cord is suspended, which is phenomenal as a hairstylist because I'm not tripping over any more cords and there's not anything in my way as I am trying to style that guest. You're gonna see that I am going to section with either a tail comb, I'm using the end of my teasing comb right now, from ear to ear, almost as we're doing like a half up, half down style. That's how we're gonna start this up style that we're gonna do today for you. Making sure that we're grabbing our hand around it. As you can see, I'm brushing everything into my hand, keeping it nice and smooth, making sure we get the smooth texture through the front and the sides. And this is a fun little thing I like to do to get in a ponytail. You take a rubber band, just a regular old rubber band that you would use in someone's hair, and you put two bobby pins on each end. You're gonna secure the one bobby pin and then you're gonna wrap it completely around that hair as many times as you can actually get it so that it's nice and taut in the hair. And then you're gonna put that bobby pin right back in so both bobby pins almost crisscross over each other so that you get a very secure, no bumps in the hair ponytail. And this is also something I like to do. This is, you take the tail comb, as you just saw me do, and you ride it through the bottom of the hair so it just smooths out any bumps or imperfections underneath that top layer. So it just smooths everything out with having to redo that ponytail from the beginning again. Always using product in the hair, using a lightweight hairspray as we did during the blow dry. We're gonna use it the whole time during our up style as well. Right now we're gonna go through, and I clipped the ponytail out of the way and I'm gonna take diagonal sections just so that we get that bottom section nice and smooth. We're gonna take our smoothing iron on a medium temperature heat and we just wanna get it nice and sleek, nice and shiny on this bottom section. Going through with small sections to make sure we don't have any creases or bumps. We don't want any imperfections on this bottom section right here. We're just prepping the hair right now, getting it set. And now we're not gonna touch that bottom section too much at all, just making sure we brush any little hairs out of the way that do come up into my hand. I'm gonna take that ponytail in small sections, especially towards the outer edges of that, and now we're gonna go through and crimp the hair. Now a lot of people think, why am I crimping the hair? That's something that we did maybe when we were a little bit younger. This is just to add that texture in. Like I said earlier with the blow drying, I put in that cream gel to add more texture into it. This is gonna help hold this crimp in as we go through and do this style so that it's set into the hair and holds the crimp in as much as we need to. It's almost like a ribbon effect that we're doing with the hair, something fun to add the texture. And you're gonna see as we go through and do the final style, why we did the crimping to begin with. Again, spraying with that working spray, making sure we're brushing it through, getting through every hair, not so that we don't have any knots, and that the working spray is completely saturated through on each level. Holding that crimper, don't be afraid to hold the crimper a little bit longer especially if you're taking a little bit of a thicker section. I'm working towards the middle now of the ponytail. So I'm taking a little bit of a thicker section. You're gonna see me clamp that down with my left hand. If you need to clamp it down, you can do that as well when you have a thicker section just to get a little bit more of a crease with the crimper. And as you get toward that very tail end of the hair, you can go through it really fast with the crimping iron because that is a little bit of the thinner section, so you're just gonna go through really fast and crimp it down. You do wanna be careful 
that you don't take too wide of a section. If your client or guest or model has really coarse hair, go with a thinner section. This is gonna be the longest part of the styling. The style itself is very simple and easy to put up. We're just going through and really getting the hair nice and prepped so you don't have to take as much time when you're in the salon doing this. This could be something that maybe you hand off to somebody else, maybe you go through and you have somebody prep it for you and then you come in and finish the style for, you, for them. Or you just go through and power dry, like I said, like we showed earlier, and then go through and crimp it and it's a very easy style. You wanna make sure those ridges are nice and even, that you're not leaving any straight hair in between. So you're lining up the first ridge with the last ridge. And then going through, we're almost done here. Taking one of our last sections. I believe this is our second to last section. You can see again, me clamping it down with my other hand just to add a little bit more pressure to it. Sliding down, moving a little faster as we go towards those ends. And you can see as I clipped that hair away with the ponytail, I didn't use a claw clip or anything like that because I already have it nice and smooth in the front section of the ponytail. So I don't want to leave any creases or any bumps in that front section since we did work already on getting some of the bumps out with the tail of my comb. And now we are all done doing the crimp. We're going to give it a nice light spray right now, again with the working spray, just to make sure we don't have any flyaways. And then I'm just going to take my brush. You can use a comb, you could use a dressing brush, you could even use the teasing brush just to brush it out. Like I said, we wanted to put this crimp in there so we had the texture in the hair. I like the fact that the crimp, crimping iron on the outside you can see has a little bit more of the ribbon effect and as we get towards the center of it, it's not as much. Now we're going to go through and we're going to wrap it, twist it slightly and then wrap it into the bun. This is why we crimp this because it's, very, it's my version of the sock bun, which is something really fun that a lot of people are doing right now, but you don't necessarily as a stylist need to put the sock or the stuffing in there. You can just put the texture in the hair and wrap it around. And you can see I'm very lightly twisting that hair into the bun, but I'm also taking the bobby pin. I'm using bobby pins, not hair pins, just to secure it. And I'm grabbing it with the tail of the bobby pin and then just sliding it right in so that the bobby pins are not noticeable. You do wanna make sure using bobby pins that you are using the same color or a very similar color to your client or guest's hair. And you can kind of mold this and sculpt this to how big you want it. Say you wanted it a little bit bigger, that's why the crimp's in there. You can almost piece it out a little bit more. Again, taking that tail of the ponytail, making sure that's the most important section of this ponytail. You want to make sure that's nice and secure down so you don't have any little pieces flying out of the, tip, out of the sock bun. style is really great for really anybody any age. I have a lot of people coming in asking for prom dues like this and then you have clients who want it for their wedding or if they're a bridesmaid or honestly even if they're just going out for a night out on the town. It's a, it can be fancy, it can be casual, you can really do a lot with this kind of style. It's something that could be ageless really. So now we're just going to go in and we're going to finish that last section. And you're going to see I'm going to take the tail of my brush again and I'm going to go diagonally down to the corner. I'm going to show you as we turn to the side. There we go. And we're just going to brush it and clip that left side out of the way. We're just going to work one side at a time. This 
is why we went through and smoothed this section because we want it nice and shiny, nice and sleek. I'm gonna spray with a little bit of a firmer hairspray right now, just so we can get that, those little baby hairs we wanna make sure are nice and smooth up against the section as well. And we're gonna wrap that to the opposite side that it falls in. And we're gonna take just a hairpin right now and place that in front so that we have that nice, shiny, silky piece right in the front of the hair. So it almost kind of cascades over the texture that we put in there with the crimping iron. Taking the tail end of that again, just the tail, we're gonna put a bobby pin in the rest of the section, we're gonna use hairpins. Spraying again as we're going through. And then letting down that last section, same thing we did with the other section, taking a little bit of a heavier spray, spraying always in the way that the hair is going so that you're not blowing the cuticle out any more than it needs to be, especially if you want something nice and silky and shiny. Combing it up, molding that front piece to how you want it to look. If you want it a little bit thicker like I did, taking the hairpin and just popping it in the bottom. You wanna make sure that you have something nice and secure underneath when you do use hairpins. That's also another good reason that we put that crimping in the first section of this bun. And now I just have this tail and a little trick I like to use is almost taking it and tucking it in. You're gonna see me do this in just one second. Still making sure it's nice and smooth. Taking the tail of either my comb or a brush and tucking it in to the bun so it's almost non-existent so you can't see where the start and the end of this section begins and ends. Just taking a hairpin and popping it in there so that you don't see the tip of it. And now taking our firmer hairspray. we don't have any pieces out of place and there's our final style of my version of the sock bun something really easy you can do with any client like we said before To see more of our educational videos, you can go to freesaloneducation.com as well as gratitudeeducation.com. And we look forward to uh, having you guys come in and check out some of our videos on our website. Before we start the salon day, it's another Wednesday live streaming. We're going to go through the consultation, um, things about a menu that can help your business, also creating um, the perfect blow dry for the perfect texture of hair, because that's really the goal today is to go over hair texture and what's going to give you the best result in the salon. So let's talk about the consultation. The consultation really for me um, is not so much about each question that you're asking. I mean, those things are important. That's something we can get into in a different day. But when you're thinking about hair texture and really what hair is all about, it's really breaking down the guest and understanding every little aspect of the guest's hair before we start touching it. Because at the end of the day, as a hairstylist being a professional, the way to be professional is to really understand hair to the fullest. So um, the first thing I like to look at is obviously um, we're going to introduce ourselves, we're going to talk to the guests and get their name. Then we're gonna look at the starting level of their hair. Let's say they're getting hair color. We definitely need to know where we're at if we want to get to where we're going. So we look at the starting level. We also look at the percentage of gray. Then we're gonna look at the hair density. Now, if you think about hair density, hair density is really just how thick the hair is. Um, 
and if you want to say like how many hairs there are per square inch, however you want to look at it. Um, but hair density is how thick the hair is. So if I have somebody with a really high density of hair, I'm obviously going to cut her hair different than I would cut somebody with a low density of hair. So really just going through the questions and asking yourself, um, what, what type of density does this guest have? If they have a high density of hair, they have a lot of hair, and we're obviously going to use more layering techniques, techniques that remove weight if they're looking to lose you know, the bulkiness of their hair and have a light, airy kind of flow to their hair. Then if they have a low density of hair, we're going to cut it differently as well. We're not going to do so many layers. So you, know, you really need to understand your guest density and what you're working with. Our ideal density is really looking at a medium density and um, so we're going to use products that are going to help us get to that point. Um, then we look at hair texture. Now some people look at hair texture and they think of, you know, is it wavy, curly, or straight? Hair texture is really the actual fabric of the hair. Is it fine, medium, or coarse? So if my guest has fine hair, I'm going to use things that are going to help try to bring it to that medium uh, uh, feel to, or texture to the hair. If they have really coarse hair, then I'm going to use products that are going to bring it down to the medium. So really I'm looking for that ideal thickness, I'm looking for the ideal texture, and just trying to get my guests to that place so that they have you know, more success with their hair at home. Um, then we look at the formation of her hair. Does she have straight hair, wavy hair, curly hair, uh, extra curly hair? Um, we need to know that because a lot of our guests nowadays, um, they're really good with the flat iron. This is like their fa favorite tool. They're at home frying their hair with it. They don't know how to use it right. But this is definitely their favorite tool. So if they come into the salon and we're doing a whole consultation with them about um, different haircuts, maybe we want to cut a fringe or a bang in their hair and they actually have super curly hair and we didn't know it, then we need to know um, through the consultation what type of hair that they really have. So we're going to look, do they have straight hair, wavy hair, curly hair, extra curly hair? Really that's only going to change the technique that we use. Um, doesn't mean that if they have curly hair we're not going to use a razor. Doesn't mean um, if they have curly hair we're not going to cut it dry. Um, you know, th there's a lot of different uh, rules that I think people build up in their mind. It's just understanding what type of hair they have before we get into the haircut. So now we're going to look at porosity. The porosity of their hair is important to understand for two different reasons. Because your guest is coming into you in the salon to have better hair when they leave. So if they're looking to have better hair when they leave, we need to understand the quality of the hair when they walk in. So if they have a high porosity, which means that their hair is very dry, um, the cuticle is probably very raised. So we're going to suggest things to them that are going to help add moisture to their hair. Um, you know, and this is a great way to introduce different things during the consultation that you have to offer at the salon. Um, and we're going to get into the menu in a couple minutes, but porosity, if you, if you help the guests understand what type of hair they have or what's wrong with their hair, they're going to fix it. It's the same way if you go to a car mechanic and you're looking to get something done, you don't understand what's wrong, you just know it's not running right, and they tell you what's wrong and then you pay to get it fixed. When they come to us, we may see things wrong in their hair, but we're not coaching them on how they can be more, uh, have more success with it at home and how they can take care of their hair at home. So, Going through the consultation, looking at porosity of hair, it's very, very important. You're going to be able to then upgrade in the salon, show them different services you have to offer that will add moisture to the hair. Maybe it's a, a semi-permanent color that adds protein. Uh, maybe it's good for that. And then we also look at, do they have medication on their hair? Because one of the reasons we, this is important, because a lot of women are on medication, and medication leaves you know, through your nails and your hair. So it's going to be sitting in your hair um, and it, as it comes out of your body. So um, there's certain chemicals like iron uh, or types of, it's not a chemical, but whatever. There's certain things that are going to leave through your hair that um, they're going to react to the chemicals that we're putting on your head. So it's just important to know, obviously we don't know what the medications are, what they're really made of, but we know that you're on a daily medication then we can take you back and do a really deep cleanse of your hair before we color it, and that's really the important thing. So that's something that we look at in our consultation before we touch our guests for the first time. Um, hopefully that will help you, um, you know, throughout your consultation, because I know a lot of people have issues with what to ask, and um, 
you know, where they go with the consultation. It's usually like, hi, how are you? What are you looking to get done? Okay, great. You go back, you mix it up, and you put it on their head. So really break down each little part of their hair and then keep a record of it and make sure that their hair is always getting better every single time they come into the salon so that, you know, that's a happy guest that's going to tell friends, it's going to create referrals and create more success for you in your book. So that's the first thing. Second thing is based on that, um, going through each little thing in our consultation, we have a, a menu at the salon. Um, this is our salon menu. And the cool thing about this is you open it up. It's very colorful. Um, it shows every service that we have to offer, including different treatments in our washroom. So if we're able to talk to you about your porosity, then we can show you the different things we have to offer that are gonna better that. We have our color menu part. Um, we have our blowout part. We have different blow dries. They're gonna help teach you how to be more successful at home with blow drying. Um, we have our wedding packages. We have our memberships, which is something we can get into in a different class. And we have our men's menu. So, um, you know, this has really helped us a lot because it's a tool that allows people to know what you're doing in the salon. I think one of the big things when you walk into a hair salon is you don't know what they have to offer. There's never anything up on the wall that shows pricing, which, you know, sometimes that could be cheesy as well. It's not like we're a McDonald's. So just having a nice looking menu that you can present to the guest that shows all the different options that you have at the salon will help you upgrade them to things that are going to better their hair. So now let's talk about creating the ideal texture for a guest. The ideal texture is obviously medium. We talked about that. So what I want to do is put products in the guest hair. They're going to create that medium texture. What we're going to do today is we're going to do a little bit of a flat wrap. Um, and the reason I want to do this is because that's really going to lay down the cuticle and I want to talk about a few key things with the blow dry. We won't go through this fully uh, in the blow dry because we're actually going to shoot blow drying videos this week for you guys. It'll be a little bit more professionally done. What this will do is I pull this blow dryer down, it's going to be loud. You're not really going to hear me talking anyways. So um, what I want to do is just go over a couple different techniques of blow drying um, and then that'll kind of end our, our uh, day today with our, our little lesson that we have. So a couple different things. You have your brush. I like to use a, a vent type brush, which is very airy, um, depending on the texture though. If, if they have a really coarse texture, I'm going to use something with a lot more bristles because that'll allow me to get more tension on the hair and smooth it out better. Um, but I do like the vent brush because of the fact that if I'm going to blow dry her hair, I want that air to flow through so it doesn't flatten it completely to her head. And I think that's the key to, um, to the flat wrap is really, you are flattening the hair and wrapping it around the face and the, and the back of the head, really trying to create that beveled edge on the hair, but you're not trying to flatten the hair completely. So um, let's look at, we're gonna use our Freestyle System blow dryer. These are my good friends and um, really cool system because of the fact that it's gonna hang from the ceiling, the cord stays out of your way and you can just really work the blow dryer around the head. So. Um, what I want to do here is as I, I wrap the hair around the head of the guest, what that's doing is beveling the hair around, creating that soft bend to it. What I want to make sure is the airflow from my blow dryer, from the nozzle of my blow dryer, this is an important piece to your blow dryer, uh, so hopefully you didn't throw it away, is work the hair around the head and keep that airflow moving just above the cuticle. So basically you should be able to leave this blow dryer just like this and work your way around the head, barely even moving the blow dryer, just everything is all on the brush. So working your way around the head. Then what I like to do, so I'll usually start around the temple area. I like to work in the front of the head first because obviously that's what they're gonna see first. So work my way around. Then what I'm gonna do is part it and drop some of this hair down. We'll tilt her head over. I'll comb some of it back and then I'm going to work in diagonal back sectioning and slide that blow dryer down. So I'm just going to leaf and work. And what the leafing is going to do is grab the hair, pull tension on it, and then also give a little bit of lift at the base. So that's really my goal there. So I'll work my way all the way around the head this way, all the way back, and then we'll work our way back around and through again. So it's just really a consistent motion and working our way. Then when I get to the fringe, 
especially with a mannequin, but you know, people have pretty bad calyx in the fringe area sometimes. So what I like to do is I like to work with a comb and work that comb back and forth. This will flatten the fringe a little bit more than a brush will, and it'll also help control the cuticle um, or control the base and the cowlick a lot better. So I work this back and forth. The key to blow drying and creating a dry preparation for let's say a haircut, which we'll get into a few weeks down the road, when we're prepping for dry haircutting, we don't want to have any kind of partings in the hair. We want the hair to be consistent all the way around the head. That's going to give you a more consistent haircut. So we'll work our way around, combing the hair, and just flattening the hair just on the top of the head with the comb. Obviously you want to be careful, you don't want to dig too much into their head, but this will really help flatten out any kind of cowlick, anything like that. So, um, blow dryer back up. So that's pretty much it for, for the blow dry. Let me just make sure there was no questions from you guys. So, I think we're good. Um, I think I answered everything it looks like. Um, so basically, if you have any questions, please comment. We, we're always answering you guys back, um, making sure that we stay consistent with that. You guys focus on this week, my thing for you would be to really break down your guest's hair, understand it to the fullest, and also look at creating a menu um, with options from your hair analysis, because each system has to work together. So the consultation has to work with the menu, and then the menu has to work with the service. So really make sure that you put everything together, um, create this system and see how it works and comment, let us know how it's working for you. Love to hear it. Love to hear what you think about these live classes. Um, they're short and sweet. Next week we're gonna get into actually hair cutting. They'll be a little bit longer, but hopefully you guys take a lot from this. And please check out our website, freesaloneducation.com. Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com and Gratitude Education. Today I'm just gonna show you guys a quick little snippet of a dry haircut. Um, this is my salon guest, Rachel. Uh, she's been coming to me for a long time. And this is a haircut that's been growing out. So um, I ran into her the other day. She said she wanted to get um, her bangs trimmed, maybe a little bit of weight taken out. So basically I get her in here. What I'm gonna do is just slightly remove some weight. We're not gonna take length from it. Um, we just wanna take out the bulk. So what I'm gonna do is I'll turn her. We're gonna take this, separate the front and the back. We're gonna do the same thing. So high point of the head, down to the ear. And that forward. So you can see definitely not trying to work on all the hair at once. I think that's where you can really get lost when you're cutting hair dry is because you're trying to take too much on. Now, Real simple. We're gonna work on her heavy side, which is the side she parts over to. Um, so she, that has the, the bulk of the density in it. And I'm gonna take a diagonal parting. I'm gonna hold that out in front. And I'm gonna hold it with a nice high elevation. Like that, if you need to zoom in on this. Okay, cool. So, We'll get a, a nice high elevation. Basically what that'll do is remove as much weight as possible. And then what I'm gonna do is just go in with a teasing technique. I'm gonna determine the length first with my fingers, right around her nose, where I want it to start. And I'll hold that up, over directing it, just over the parting. And I'm gonna work through teasing the hair with the scissor, doing a half close with my scissor, and cutting out the bulk. What that's gonna do is give me a nice broken, kind of shattered line. You can see that move really nice. Take another diagonal forward section. And I'm gonna bring that all together. So combing that new hair into the old and using that again as my guide. So just so we don't get too thick of a fringe, still holding that over the parting, but keeping that elevation high. That's really the key to this haircut here in this technique. So you can see, 
starting to push that weight, but it's collapsing right here, right around the cheekbone and the temple area, which is where a lot of guests complain about weight being too heavy. Same thing. Bring it over. Nice high elevation again. Slight twist with my fingers. Really just pinching that hair. I like this technique because of the, the line that it gives. It's not, it's not a real harsh line and it doesn't build up any weight. Bring this over. Up over the face here. I don't have to grab up all the hair. You'll see I don't, I don't have everything in my hand now. Just making sure that I get it over the parting. You can see a much lighter face frame in there. Now with the weak side, I'm just going to over direct that again just over the parting and work with the teasing technique but I'm not over directing that to the other side because really just want to keep some of the weight in there I don't want to over direct it too far so still a high elevation just less over direction same thing working in the temple elevation is high Last section here. So really preserving the length, which is the best part about this. Is the hair is still going to be nice and long, but it just takes that weight off. Adds a little piece. The other thing about Rachel's haircut, you can see this, we zoomed out now. Okay, cool. So some of the things uh, about Rachel's haircut is when you look at her, her face, before, with the hair, without these pieces in here, it makes her face look shorter. Um, and what this does is kind of stretches everything out. And if, so if the hair is all the way down here, it's just gonna, the separation between this is gonna shrink her face in. So I wanted to add those pieces in there, just brings her face down into the haircut and allows, you know, um, it to kind of accent her facial features. In now what we're gonna do is work into the back. We'll take the clip out both sides and she's just got a lot of bulk in there and I don't want to I don't want to cut super short layers because you know she's not looking for anything too funky so um, and I like the bulk of her hair she can really curl it up and, and wear it nice so we're just gonna do a nice high elevation we're gonna work pie shape sections and just go through real quick with that teasing technique and just remove some of the bulk in there And this, I'm not over directing the hair at all. I'm just working um, each section right next to the other one. So there's no over direction straight out from the head. So as I cut it, it's not really important to me where I'm combing from because it's just straight out from the head. So just making sure you're consistent, work your way around the head, make sure the elevation is high. Half close of the scissor in there. The other key thing about this is this isn't really a, this is not a full haircut, this is just a maintenance part. So it's just taking out a little bit of the bulk. Get that guest in maybe four weeks after you cut her hair. And then in a few more weeks, she's gonna need to come back in, we're gonna do a, a full haircut on her. But this is just a good way to maintain it, get out some of that bulk, and keep her wearing her hair nice and long. Last one here, right behind the ear. Straight off from the head, high elevation. Take a little bit of spray. You can really see these layers kind of come to life in her hair here. Each one of these little pieces. Her side fringe in there. And then, if I want to define those pieces just a little bit more, what I'll do is take my scissor, We'll tilt her head to the side. 
and I'll just work my scissor in and right around that cheekbone area I can cut in these pieces. Now I'll just define those pieces a little bit more. Same thing right here. Just gives those pieces a little bit of separation in there. All right, so that's how you kind of maintain cool little dry cutting technique. Work on that, uh, the teasing. I, I really love that technique. I use it quite a bit in the salon. Just a real easy way to remove weight and add a little bit of fun to, the, to your haircut in the end result. So please check out more of our techniques on freesaloneducation.com and gratitudeeducation.com. Thanks.